you had to rank them, what is the loudest, most vicious, craziest atmosphere that you've ever been in? If I were to pick my top two, one, and I didn't think uh, it could be, you know, pass with like with Nebraska being number two. It's a close second, but it was probably the loudest, loudest really? environment I've I've been in. Louisville's own Isaac Grendo with us, one of my favorite running backs uh, in this entire class, especially for teams that run outside zone. Very few people can hit it like this man right here. Thank you for coming by. How's your Shrine Bowl been? Um, it's it's been awesome. You know, it's a great experience. Probably, a, you know, it's obviously a, a once in a lifetime experience. But you know, just being here, you know, em embracing it all. You know, all the interviews. You know. It's obviously the first time you're able to get, you know, a little bit of feedback from scouts, you know, actually hear it from them. So, you know, it's, it's been awesome. So I'm sure you've been getting a lot of feedback, especially about speed. And we're going to talk about speed a little bit because high school track champ, correct? Yeah, yep. Yeah. 23 on the GPS? I did. Yeah. Also correct? Now I'm going to put you on the spot. Faster than Jonathan Taylor? Oh, I hate this question. <laughs> True, false? It's a tough one. You know, just because, you know, he wouldn't, you know, I'm just going to go with we're, we're the same speed. We're, we're very, very similar. Yeah. We've raced a couple of times, you know, it's always always neck and neck. <laughs> okay. All right, I'll take that. Very diplomatic answer. Yeah, yeah. I appreciate that. <laughs> but to be even in the same neighborhood puts you in a rare skill set at your size. Don't typically find that much speed combined with that much size. And as a result, as we're talking about, teams that run outside zone, and there's plenty in the NFL – have scouts been talking to you from those teams, and and how do they feel about your game, and especially because you bring that aspect? Um, yeah. So s schematically, you know, obviously, you know, that's that's really my type of game. You know, just a one one cut type guy. But um, you know, I think one thing that really does help me, you know, is like you know, I am 220 pounds, but you know, I think maybe you know some defenses, you know, like he he can't run because he's he's a big guy. You know, he's just a short short yardage guy. But you know, when I when I do hit the accelerator, you know, I can run a little bit. So you know, I think it helps me out. You know, forces a few poor angles, which is which is definitely helpful for me. Yeah, I've seen you break a few. <laughs> Something that I've really liked about your game is your feet, which as a bigger back, there's a lot of bigger backs where. It, no disrespect to them, you know, turn like a battleship. You're not one of those. You got you got a really, really good skill set when it comes to footwork, not just in terms of being able to press it front side, but also the actual footwork that you have to hit it backside and like really run off that hip of your center on the cutbacks. How long did it take you to train your feet to be that quick? There's that piston quickness to go from we're pressing to we're cutting instantly. Uh, yeah, so for me, you know, like footwork, you know, being a bigger guy is, you know, something that I definitely focus on like a lot more. I feel like, you know, as far as drill work, you know, whatever that may be. But, um, you know, just being being able to do a lot of that over the work or over the years, you know, just, just helped me develop that that specific aspect of my game. And then, you know, I feel like, you know, just less is best with me. You know, that's one cut, you know, usually for me, you know, maybe a one, two here and there. But, you know, never really too much, um, you know, and I kind of pride myself on that. You know, I feel like that's really just what works best for me, you know, what's what's most efficient. So, you know, I kind of just stick by that. And, you know, you, you mentioned less is best. That's a lesson that a lot of running backs that, that don't do a lot of outside zone in college, then they, you know, predominantly inside zone, shotgun, all that kind of stuff and they're not used to the track of outside zone, they're not used to the pace of it, they get to the league to like a Shanahan offense, and you almost see them cut too much, and they'll cut into the defender. Right, right. Whereas you, it's almost like you're cutting to where you know the flow is going to go rather than where it is. Mm -hmm. Was that something that you had to develop throughout college? You just always had that kind of spatial awareness of like, I'm going to aim to where I know the hip is going to be. Um, definitely a, a development thing, I would say. You know, obviously... Starting out as a, a receiver in high school, transitioning to running back in college, you know, there's a big, big learning curve mm -hmm. there. Um, so kind of learning that, but, you know, having mentors, you know, like Jonathan Taylor, you know, playing with him for two years, you know, being able to learn from him. But, you know, at the same time, like I said, you know, size comparison, you know, we're both 220 pounds, but, you know, we're very similar as far as, I mean, I would say that's another reason why I kind of look at, at him as a model running back. But, you know, not only on the field, but off the field as well. You know, he's a, he's a great guy. But 
um, yeah, just like I said, you know, just being that kind of one one cut type guy, um, you know, is something that definitely developed over the years. You know, when I first came in, um, you know, running back was, you know, it was foreign to me, you know, mm -hmm. learning protections, learning, you know, how to runs hit, stuff like that. But, you know, once I was able to get reps and opportunities, you know, that was something that, you know, I kind of learned and picked up on. I wanted to talk to you about a couple of complimentary pieces to your game, and you already leaned towards one of them. You said you were a receiver in high school? Yeah. So I wanted to talk about your approach for receiving because a lot of outside zone backs, they're going to turn that into a swing instead of a pitch. Mm -hmm. You're going to have to catch the ball. Talk about your development as a receiver, but it sounds like it started in high school. Um, yeah, so, you know, obviously at Wisconsin, you know, the offensive scheme was way different than what I just played in at, at, yeah. at Louisville. So, yeah. uh, you know, making that transition, you know, was definitely a, a plus for me. You know, I did split out a couple times at Wisconsin, but, um, you know, running the ball 40 plus times a game, you know, there, there might not be a lot of opportunity there. But, you know, obviously, you know, what they did, you know, it worked. They, they won football games. You know, I was I was all for it. You know, it kind of helped me, you know, see see runs a, a lot better you know sure. obviously played behind a lot of great old lines there but um you know obviously making the transition to louisville um being at a school that's more you know dynamic as far as you know being able to run the ball and throw the ball um you know it obviously helps helps the running back you know the last thing we want to be is just one dimensional you know we want to be multi-dimensional where we can show you know that we can pass protect run the ball and be able to catch the ball out of the backfield so you know making that transition into a you know a team that throws the ball a lot more i think it was good for me i think it was good for me to you know show versatility and you know yeah. that i can do more than just run the ball you know one advantage you have in this class uh relative to a lot of other backs like you were in college for five years, but you know you're sharing a backfield with Jonathan Taylor. You're sharing a backfield with Braylon. Mm -hmm. You go to Louisville, Kent. You're sharing a backfield, but that's preserved you. You know you right. have like I think it's 250, maybe even less than 250 carries in college. So you have all your tread. Mm -hmm. Do you feel like that path was beneficial to you because you got to develop as a running back? You got time to learn the game without breaking down your body. Right. Um, definitely feel like that was a, a blessing in disguise. You know, obviously, you know, you want as many opportunities as you can get, but, you know, being able to use that to my benefit, you know, I, I haven't taken as many hits of a lot of, a lot of backs that, you know, get drafted or undrafted and go somewhere out of college. Um, and, you know, I definitely like to see that more as a, a, a positive thing for me. Um, but you know, also you know, being being around you know a lot of a lot of deep backfields, you know, that's kind of a, a, a part of it. Got to be able to pass protect in the league. You talked a little bit about pass protecting. Certainly, coming from receiver, that was probably one of the biggest adjustments. 100%. Talk about your mentality. I'm not not so much the mechanics of pass protection, but how do you approach pass protection from a mental standpoint? Um, you know, I think for a lot of backs, you know, it really is kind of more like a a mental thing than it is physical because. You know, physicality is what got most running backs to, to where they are. But, you know, I feel like it's really just an approach of, you know, attacking the line of scrimmage and then, you know, understanding, you know, obviously there's going to there's gonna be a collision. But, you know, being a running back, you know, you already take a lot of hits. So, you know, just making sure, you know, you're closing space and you're all ready for that collision. And then, you know, also, you know, being able to, to mirror a backer as well. But, you know, I feel like, you know, obviously watching film, you know, understanding linebackers, you know, that helps a lot, you know, kind of understanding, you know, how they are going to attack you, whether that, you know, is a, a bull rush mentality or, you know, they're more of like a side side to side, make a move type guy. In terms of special teams, because you're a, a background as a receiver, but you're also super physical, are you getting questions from special teams coordinators about being a gunner and a returner? Like and just kind of all four special teams, all four core special teams, like being key components to all of them. Um, I definitely, you know, made it clear. You know, I've throughout my career, I've probably played every single position on kickoff and definitely every special team. So, um, you know, being able to have that, you know, film obviously, but you know, just also just let them know, you know, I'm I'm willing to do whatever it takes to win, whatever I can to to help contribute to a team. Um, you know, whether that's on offense or, you know, whether that is special teams, you know, I'm, I'm willing to do it. And I think, you know, a lot of guys, you know, early on, they get caught up in, you know, like, I think I should be playing at my position, you know, but, you know, they kind of overlook the special teams, you know, if they think they're too good for it. But, you know, in reality, you know, I'm, I'm all for it. I'm willing to do whatever it takes. 
you're going to face a, a, a lot of loud crowds in the NFL, right? Every stadium is going to be packed yep. every single weekend. But being a former Big Ten player and former ACC mm -hmm. player, you've seen a lot of loud crowds in college oh, yeah. too. 100%. You had to rank them. What is the loudest, most vicious, craziest atmosphere that you've ever been in? If I were to pick my top two, one, and I didn't think uh, – it could be, you know, pass with like with Nebraska being number two. It was a close second, but NC State was probably the loudest, loudest really? environment I've I've been in. Um, you know, they made it clear that week that it was going to be loud, but I was like, I've played in louder. No way, no way, it's worse than than Nebraska. You know, obviously they have like a hundred thousand seat stadium and it's always packed, but. So I'm like, you know, I'm, I'll be able to manage. You know, I've, I've been around it before. And then, you know, I get there and I'm like, wow, I, I can't hear anything. <laughs> so, you know, obviously being on the field, that's that's pretty hard to deal with. But, you know, we also, you know, we do a lot of signaling at Louisville. So that, that kind of helped us out in, in that instance. But would definitely, uh, even though I didn't think Nebraska could be best, uh, NC State would probably have to be number one. It is interesting that we get Nebraska as the most common Nebraska answer. Nebraska is a very common answer, and yeah. for all the reasons you said, always packed, super loud, behind their Huskers all the way, but NC State's a first, so that's fun. Yeah, that's for some, I mean, go Wolfpack. Yeah. Don't kill us, NC State fans. That's all right. We, we had Devin Leary yesterday. <laughs> we like NC State. So we always say your guys are the best scouts we see because you're with guys for a whole year or multiple years. You know, on the field, in the locker room. You're only at Louisville for a year, but who's going to come next year and sit in that chair from Louisville? Who's coming up for the Cardinals? Um, that's a tough one. There's probably a, a couple guys I could say. Um, I'll go in my room for this one though. Uh, Maurice Turner. You know, he's he's one of the most God gifted athletes. You know, I've been a part of. Uh, Man, you know, his, his contact balance, you know, comparison with his speed, but, you know, power as well. Um, I'm really excited for him this next season. You know, I think he's going to have a breakout year, and, you know, I think it's going to be big for him, and I'm, I'm looking forward to for people to watch him for sure. Well, I can't wait to see where you go in the NFL. Uh, I'm sure 49ers, Dolphins, <laughs> Rams, one of those teams are going to pick you up. And you're going to be highly productive there. Again, one of the best, if not the best, outside zone runner in this class. And I, I say that with all due sincerity. You're a special back uh, in that. that kind of system. Can't wait to see where you go. Thank awesome. you so much for coming. It was a pleasure, man. Appreciate you. Isaac, thanks for coming by. Thank you. Thank you, guys.